Have I gone Orient crazy? A tiny bit. Welcome everyone to Vintage Digital Watches. As you can tell from the description, this episode is dedicated to Orient. And I've tried to organize my thoughts in a way that I have done before, like a collection review or a watch review, but because I want to showcase more than one watch, uh, there will be a little bit of everything. I'll be taking you through the Orients that I have, the design, the construction, some things to watch out about their innards, and there will also be a little bit of history. Oh, and I mustn't forget, I have to do a wristwatch check. So today I'm wearing this Citizen 7 calculator watch. It's usually sold under the Viga brand, but I actually found this for a really low price. It was 9.5 euros plus shipping and the reference number is 9288. With that done, let's kick off the episode. So Orient is a part of the Seiko Epson group and was founded in the 50s. Unlike the mother brands, which also did other products, Orient was solely focused on watches, doing mechanical pieces as you'd expect in the early years. Once the digital watch came in existence, they also jumped on the bandwagon and did for a few years LED watches, but moved to LCD soon after. You won't find under Orient the same variety of bells and whistles like you see with Seiko, Casio or Citizen, so there will be no sensor watches, computer watches, radio, recorders, etc. But you will find the main variety of functions like regular LCD, calculator, solar, musical alarm and so on spread across a few models. Oh, and did I mention there is a message watch? Yeah, there is. That one is so cool. And here are the models in my collection. There is quite a bit of variety, but I do have a version, well, a module that is repetitive, but you can't easily spot it because of the distinct cases. That is the 64100 model. And I do have four of these, so all the more reason to give it its own segment in the video. Size-wise for Orient, you see the same trend. Start with more larger watches, and go through smaller ones by mid 80s. But here is where they are not so typical. The early ones when they were bigger in all brands, the Orient ones like the 64100 are really big, like absolute tanks. And they sit really well today because of that. They are not the wall clock types like you see on fashion watches, but they are in the sweet spot of today. Orient invested a lot more in design, even with later models where you see the more gentle curves as opposed to the other brands. But here is where they shine and look at the ornaments beside the display. It's like they wanted a decorated dial on a digital watch and boy they've succeeded. Just look at how beautiful the effect is. Oh yeah, and the 64100 has this nifty low power mode where you can turn off the screen. This is because in the early years when components were really huge, they ate a lot of power so power saver function was helpful. And since we are talking components, here is a look at the model it uses and we can see the quality construction. Nicely layered design, held in place with bolts, not plastic clips. Again, built like a tank. It runs on two batteries and be aware that one is larger than the other, very unusual. So they work with an LR41 and a 393 battery. It does have a micro light that is very bright at night, can't really tell that here. And my favorite function is that you can choose to display either the seconds or the day of the month. This is a very, very practical feature that I haven't seen in any other watch. Okay, so enough about the 64100. I'm sure there are many other variations of the case for it. And here are some images. So if you want to start collecting for this, you have a lot of space to do that. The thing I hate about Orient are the PCBs in later models and if you ever open the watch you know there are backlight boards, ceramic boards and Orient came up with this um, film board. They are very flimsy, nearly impossible to correct using silver liquid or epoxy compounds due to the elastic nature of the board and if you solder on them you risk melting them if you don't have the temperature set up just right. Not sure why they chose this, but I see a lot of later Orion models like the Music Alarm that are in never used condition new old stock with the corroded interior so badly corroded that it is beyond fixing. Some other models I have in the collection are this Musical Alarm. It was sold in a variety of cases. Let's hear it play some music. And here we have the infamous calculator, which I have done a complete review if you want to have a look in my videos. 
the best looking digital calculator ever in my opinion. Also Orion did a lot of solars, if you are into that, here is a beautiful representative that currently doesn't have a sound inside, yet it still works. And they made other chronographs in different shapes and sizes. You can really see here as well the investment in appearance. Very tastefully done. You can wear one today so, so easy. So let's try to give some general aggregated marks. Collectability is a 5 out of 10 because it is a generally looked over brand by LCD watch collectors, yet when you see one you will definitely be intrigued and will ponder in getting it. Price wise we give it a 6 out of 10 because currently they are in two extremes, either very expensive or cheap, not pocket change cheap. And this is because the collector's market for them is in the beginning, so sellers either don't want to miss out on a possibly good deal so they jack up the price or are realistic and realize that they don't sell that quickly, even more so if they cost an arm and a leg. As for availability, we'll give it a 5 out of 10. I'm not sure how much they were intended for the overseas market and I think mainly they were JDMs, Japanese domestic market, but they aren't that common. Yes, there are a few models on eBay at any given time, but can't compare to other of Japan's brands in numbers. This is where we end and the purpose of this video was more to bring awareness about this stunning brand. It absolutely deserves to have more models salvaged from whatever drawer they are sitting in. And trust me, you will not be disappointed. And actually, I'm curious of your opinion. Have you ever encountered LCDs from Orient? Did you like them? Did you not like them? Do you think they are worth collecting? Leave it in the comments below, I am really curious. Have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you on the next Vintage Digital Watches. Bye!